Hello everybody, and in today's video we are going to be doing a race between the BFR, which is on your left hand side, and the Starship, which is on the right hand side, to Duna, or Mars, and back. So let's get the engines fired up and we can get going. It looks like Starship has taken a little bit of a lead right off the pad as we can go ahead and get the time lapse turned on, as both these vehicles will begin their gravity turns and they will head on out to Duna. Yes, if you do not know, the BFR is kind of the old design for Starship, one of the old designs. This is just my favorite old design, so it wouldn't be a fart. You know, it's got the three fins, very, very epic design. So obviously Starship on the right-hand side is the most current, the most current iteration of the, you know, the big epic SpaceX, Elon Mars rocket crazy thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, and then BFR was one of the original designs, or this is uh, around 2018. This is the design they got switched to in fall of 2019. Um, so it would have been named a little bit before then, but uh, that's that's the kind of the epic lore behind this thing here as both craft are pitching over with the Starship on a little bit of a lead as we are getting ready for Miko and stage separation. There it goes. So we can go ahead and get booster cam of the Super Heavy enabled and now we can start its boost back burn and get ahead back to the KSC. And the same will be going on with BFR when its Super Heavy eventually runs out. Uh, these craft are quite similar, you know, the design, overall design is like, you know, the, the lander, the up, upper stage, bottom stage, they're quite similar, the Super Heavy is actually almost identical as the BFR is staged away, but obviously the, the stainless steel and the flap design are really the two big things. Um, now there was an iteration to BFR, um, or Starship as I think, the name change in point, the point is, this is the carbon fiber version of BFR from 2018, epic, there we go, as the... Uh, as the Super Heavies are going to start to get ready to do their landing birds, we got the Starship going to light up its engines first, almost coming in for a landing with the BFR Super Heavy not that far behind. I mean, that's not really the race between the Super Heavies, it's the race between the, the upper stages that's to, so you can get back to Kerbin first, right? So you got to get to get to Duna, then they're going to be refilling on Duna, and then they're going to be heading on all the way back to Kerbin. It's going to be very epic as the BFR Super Heavy comes in for its landing, kind of running out of fuel right over the surface, but that it made it anyway, kind of a hard landing, but it made it. Very Ryanair status, but it looks like both craft are now just on the power of their vacuum engines. The design of the engines is a little bit different, so Starship obviously, as we all know, has the three sea levels and the three vacuum engines. There was actually, you know, continuing with the theme of a lot of different iterations, the BFR had a lot of different uh, engine iterations, but uh, the one I went with, which seemed to be the one that was there the longest was is there is a one vacuum engine in the middle surrounded by six sea level engines so that is very epic and now the starship is going to be planning its journey on out to duna um one of the biggest setbacks for bfr is that only singular vacuum engines it takes a long time to do these vacuum burns especially to get circularized in lko as starship lights up its three uh, raptor i was going to say merlin for a second oh that is inaccurate fake news and it's going to be heading out to Duna as the BFR is going to do its burn as well. While we're doing this, if you're enjoying the very epic video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I got to do the plug. Very awesome. Uh, we also have a very awesome Discord service, some merch over at pilotshop.com. And you also, if you want to become a patron, you can do so in a link below. And also, you can become a channel member uh, by hitting the join button. All right, awesome plugs. Thank you, everyone, for all the support as BFR has lit up its vacuum engine to do its burn, which is like over twice as long as Starship's burn. So that's not that's not good for it. It's it's a little bit behind here. A Starship is almost done with its correction burn. There it is. And now it is going to head on out to Duna. And it's going to do, obviously, these are, these are both aero capturing. So let's go straight out and you do any Duna um, at capture burn or anything like that. That is lame. As the BFR just finishes up its interplanetary burn, and Starship is almost here. Duna is in sight. Just going to get set up for landing, get some of the fuel set up, get some action group set up, because I forgot to do that at the hangar, uh, or the, uh, the, the VAB, or whatever, the VAB. And here we are. The Starship is the first to arrive at Duna, as it is going to get its fins activated, or flap, flappy, flappy, Elanoron type things as every astronaut calls them. And now we are gonna start the descent into Duna's atmosphere. Heating is really not that much of a problem on Duna. Um, but, well, it's like a weird swallow there, but uh, heating's not really much of a problem. But you can come in, you cannot, you can't come in too steep on Duna because you won't slow down because yes, there's not much atmosphere, which doesn't cause a lot of heating, but you know, there's not a lot of atmosphere. So there's not that much to slow you down. So we have to kind of get it around. I, I usually come in around the 20 kilometer altitude as both craft are going to be slowing down and starting their approaches to Duna as BFR has now entered the atmosphere as well. So we have both craft here in the atmosphere heading on down to the surface of the Mars or the Duna 
as both are quite close. BFR is starting to catch up here. It's coming a little bit faster through the atmosphere as Starship has bled off. Most of its uh, velocity is now going to start transitioning to a sort of belly flop. The same thing with BFR as it just come below 20 kilometers in altitude. Starship is now down at 10 kilometers. Kind of close, kind of close. Who's going to get down first? They're still actually a little ways away because, yeah... He starts by only going 400 meters a second, and BFR is very quickly slowing down through one kilometer a second. Its fins have been activated and set up into its entry position as it is going to start its final descent. It is going to itself start transitioning into the belly flop as most of its horizontal speed has been cancelled. But Starship is now coming through four kilometers. It is quite close to the surface. Here we're going to be relating all six engines at uh, one, uh, just under one kilometer. Then Starship is going to be transitioning down to just one one sea level engine to do the landing as we will see very very shortly and there they come starship engines have relit it is flipping retrograde awesome very epic as the engines get cancelled off there we go now we just have the one sea level engine to do the final landing burn as the landing legs get deployed on starship bfr is still a little bit high up just coming through 10 kilometers in altitude we're only landing up three engines on bfr so we're landing up the vacuum engine as well as uh, two, actually, yeah, I believe four sea level engines, actually. I believe I misspoke. So we have five engines in total as Starship is coming in for a landing. Touchdown! There we go. Starship has been the first one to make it. And it is going to do some very epic picture taking. And then we are going to, and let's look at one kind of cool screenshot. And then uh, we will be uh, refilling. And then we'll be getting ready to head back out as BFR is getting ready to do its flip and burn. And there we go. Engine, 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 engine. There we go. We have five engines burning. We are going to be transitioning down to just two sea levels for BFR's landing. And now Starship is back in the air on its way back to Kerbin. Just lighting up one engine initially on Starship. Then we're going to be switching on all six engines once we have cleared the surface. I don't know, dust reasons, whatever. I figured that might be how they do it in real life. But who knows? We do not know. Mars is still a while. When Mars, man, right? So, uh, BFR now coming onto the surface. Touchdown! All right. BFR needs to quickly get refueled and then head back up to orbit as Starship is taking a bit of a lead. All this kind of fast lead the entire video. As you're now throttling up. BFR going to be lighting just two engines initially, and then you're going to be switching to all seven engines. BFR has a lot of sea level engines, which is a lot of vectors, which gives it a lot of thrust here, so it can take this opportunity as its engines get fired up here to maybe get a little bit of ground made up on Starship as Starship is now just burning its three vacuum engines as it is going to be ready to almost get into orbit. It's crossing around 700 meters a second in a few seconds here, and orbital velocity around Dune is around 950 meters a second as the BFR is coming up, really flying up through that atmosphere, getting real close to Starship here. Now, it is just burning its vacuum engine, and that's where things start to get really slow with BFR because it only has basically one-third the thrust in a vacuum as the Starship does, so it's really gonna really gonna struggle here as Starship is going to start planning its uh, orbital insertion burn, and then it's gonna be planning its return burn to Kerbin, which is gonna be the, the, the you know, it's gonna get intense. Here we go. Waterfall looks so cool with the, the three vacuums there on Starship. That is just, that is very epic. Um, as, uh, as the BFR is just about to finish up, it's burnout, to be honest, it'll take it like a year because that vacuum is so slow, so slow. Here we go, here we go. I don't know, is it, I, don't know I think this is a good decent BFR. It's gonna be like almost all day to make this BFR, to be honest, this thing. Very hard BFR, I don't know. Maybe some people can improve it up. Uh, the craft files are um, a members only benefit, so I'll be dropping the craft file to the members very shortly. And I have a Patreon as well, so uh, if any of you guys want to go have a, you know, a crack at it, um, see if I can see if you can improve. Probably can. Either way, um, it's supposed to be a race, isn't it? Uh, so capitalism, am I right? How about the member. The point is words. Okay, so, um, Starship is planning its. Uh, correction burn as the BFR is going to be planning its return burn the return burn and is going to light up the engine right now very epic as it does the burn which does take a while because one vacuum engine very slow very slow indeed comrade um, <laughs> now the uh, the correction burn is being planned by the starship and then once the BFR finishes its burn, which it has, it is going to be planning its own correction burn, as it looks like Starship is probably going to be entering the atmosphere of Kerbin uh, a little bit before the BFR, which will probably help it in its chances of winning, but you never know, maybe it'll come back, who knows? Um, and here we go. We have 
Uh, we have uh, the BFR just about finishing up its correction burn, and now Starship is in the sphere of influence of Kerbin, is now going to start its entry into the Kerbin, Kerbin? I was going to say Kerbal for a second, that's the start, we probably don't want to be entering into that thing's atmosphere, I guess stars don't really have atmospheres, but rambling aside, so we're going to get Starship set up for landing, and now it is going to enter the atmosphere, and it's going to start its entry maneuver, back into Kerbin, getting a lot of temperature gauges here, so we're trying to not melt the stuff, um, <laughs> as we are going to get ready to do our first aero break pass as the BFR is starting to catch up a little bit. It does need to come in for a little bit more aggressive of an entry because it is a little bit behind. It's trying to make up some ground here, getting a lot of temperature gauges on BFR as Starship comes in back for another pass here in just a moment. As BFR just comes below 42 kilometers, it is about to probably start to go back up. I believe our periaps for this thing was around 30 something kilometers as the BFR very, very nearly melts. Like, trust me, I didn't have any cheats on. No cheats, no cheats, I checked. They were, that, that is, that was really close to melting. Uh, as the Starship comes in for its next pass. And at this point, I realize that Starship really needs to get deorbited here because, uh, yeah, it just needs to get deorbited. I kept messing around too much, and I saw a little piece of land I can flop myself onto, so I get the engines turned on, flip it retrograde, and then just get ourselves lined up for that little piece of land. And now Starship is headed on on its suborbital trajectory, getting ready to land as the BFR is now headed back up, getting ready for its next pass as it's scrubbing off a lot of speed here. It's got a lot of surface area with those flaps, and it's got a big old body there to slow it down as Starship is coming in. Coming in super, super flat because I'm trying to basically glide the thing over to that next piece of land. Starship got less lucky than BFR in terms of where it ended up landing because this thing came really close to the ocean, so it had to do these, like, space shuttle gliding maneuvers to try and get to try and get all the way to land but luckily bfr was over some giant continent there as it is coming in under two kilometers a second starship is under about 1.8 kilometers a second right about now as bfr has passed through max heating and is now going to get ready to transition into the belly flop as starship is just trying to make it to the desert place Oh, uh, obviously, we're not going to try and get to KSC. That is too much work now. I mean, I guess he maybe could have, but uh, this video literally has been like a 12-hour ordeal, to be honest. So, yeah. Either way, um, BFR is just starting to make its way to the daytime side. How nice of it to come in for landing on the daytime-ish side. Um, <laughs> as Starship is now coming under one kilometer a second, BFR is a little bit behind in terms of the speed because Starship is just a little bit low into the atmosphere. It's atmosphere is like really trying to slow it down here as Starship is going to transition itself into the belly flop mover. It's going to scrub off as much horizontal speed as possible as BFR, which is coming a lot more stable to be honest. Um, flaps are doing a lot less waggling, waggling, wiggling, wiggly waggling. Uh, it's going to start transitioning into the um, into horizontal flight or into sideways flight, into floppy flight. We'll call it floppy flight as Starship is now just under 16 kilometers, but BFR looks like it has may have in fact taken the lead, coming in under 11 kilometers, and BFR also falls a bit quicker, which may give it a little bit of an advantage here during the belly flop, as both craft are basically in the exact same phase of flight, coming down nice and easy. As I said, BFR does come in a little bit quicker, so it is going to be having to light engine just a little bit sooner, which may give it a little bit longer of a landing bird. BFR will be lighting four of the six engines, and then deselecting down to two engines during the landing burn, and then Starship are going to be doing its normal landing, so lighting up three, and then dropping down to two. Under five kilometers for Starship, under about two kilometers for BFR, getting real close to the relay for both of them. Looks like BFR has just a little bit of an advantage as we are coming in at one kilometer, and BFR is going to light up four engines. There it goes, going to do its flip maneuver. Starship at one and a half kilometers, continuing to descend. BFR dropping down to two engines. Starship now at 650 meters, lighting up its three engines, going to do its flip maneuver. Looks like both are pretty close to BFR, still a little bit lower. It's down to two engines, coming in under 100 meters. Starship now under 100 meters, and down two engines. Very close. Who's going to win? Very close. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Starship by, like, just a hair. Yeah, that was close. There, Starship. Um... Very epic. On screen now is all of the members. If you want to become a member, hit the join button below. We also got some Patreons. So if you want to become a Patreon, you can hit the link in the description below. Quick disclaimer, if this is really just for entertainment purposes, this is not supposed to be like a legit comparison as to which is better, you know. Yeah, so disclaimer, entertainment purposes. Hope you were entertained. Are you not entertained? Okay, so uh, that's going to be extended to video. If you'd like to thank you for watching this next time, please write a comment to the video. Once again, thank you for watching this next time, and bye!